While knights, dragons, and fairy tales are frequently used to portray the Middle Ages, the experiences of actual individuals who lived during this turbulent era are frequently far more intriguing and a bit mortifying. particularly the often unheard stories of women. Many times the image of women as either evil seducers or virginal divinities left no gray area for a reasonable perception of women as actual individuals. From women being largely scorned for failing to epitomize the Virgin Mary's perfection, to period shaming, to cruel punishments for seemingly unnecessary sins, this video counts down 15 messed up things that women in the medieval era experienced. Being a woman during that era wasn't always easy. Here we go, starting the list off at… Number 1. Menstrual Cycle Let's try not to quiver as we briefly discuss periods. You might be wondering why the period is on this list. Well, things may be bad now, but things were much, much worse in the Middle Ages. Simply said, they lack the same resources that we do now. As a result, many people were forced to improvise to survive the whole ordeal. People had to get inventive because period products weren't a thing those days. They would create sanitary pads out of rags or other materials. They had to develop a means to keep things in place because underwear wasn't also very popular at the time. Plus, they would occasionally create a crude version of a medieval tampon by wrapping cotton fabric around a twig and sticking it up their vagina. Ouch! That sounds very uncomfortable. In other occasions, some women would also look for bog moss, using it to produce period pads due to its remarkable absorbency. Because of its usage in the treatment of wounds and the use of menstrual flow, this type of moss earned the nickname blood moss. Other people would simply settle for donning red the entire time because they simply weren't capable of producing these kinds of things. I guess the menstruation just kind of merged with their cherry red dresses. Number 2. Devils Incarnate Women were severely oppressed and misunderstood during the medieval era. In fact, the criteria for identifying a lady changed throughout time because they believed that so many women were witches. Thus, it came to the point where many women would be declared witches for the flimsiest of reasons. People back then believed that because women were regarded to be Satan in human form and so predisposed to sin, they must be witches. You don't understand the logic of that? Well, Let's explain it. There were four possible justifications for a woman being a member of the Devil's Posse. One is that women were thought to be naive and foolish, which was why they turned to magic. Two, because women's desires for sensual pleasures were insatiable, they turned to the Devil for assistance in satisfying their desires. Three, because women talk a lot and allegedly tell lies. Four, because women are powerless and the only way we can get revenge is through the use of spells and magic. How absurd is it now? Perhaps men in medieval times were simply envious because they couldn't compete with the devil or because they secretly understood that women rule the world, right? Number 3. Metal spikes were jammed into the mouths of demanding women. The skull's bridle, an iron cage for a lady's face, was used to chastise skulls or women who complained, spread rumors, spoke back or simply talk excessively. A bulging, spike-covered piece of metal would be shoved into her mouth as the bridle was clamped onto her head. The spikes lacerated her tongue whenever they moved it. The bridled woman was occasionally shackled to a hook by her fireplace in her house until she understood her mistake. Or to further humiliate her, she might even be paraded through town while wearing the mask. Nowadays, your demands as a woman should be heard, but back then, a bridle would be latched to your mouth, literally. Are you ready for number four? It will shock you. Number four, gossip in the stocks. Women who gossip risk being confined by the neck and abandoned outside to the whims of the public. For women only, there existed a sort of pillory called the thew that resembled stocks. The woman's wrists were bound, unlike men, but then they should be chained to a post by her neck as retribution for her crime. Common offenses included bothering your neighbors with excessive chatter or engaging in extramarital sex. Anne Morrow was charged in 1777 with impersonating a man and getting married to a different woman. She was placed on the pilgrim, where an enraged mob stoned her till she became blind. Number 5. Getting Married Young 
Countless individuals marry at various ages. I mean, many of us have heard of two lovebirds who get married immediately after high school. Others have attended high school with those who delayed getting married till later in life. However, girls and women were marrying off at a relatively young age during the Middle Ages. A girl would become mature and be allowed to marry at the age of 12, usually to someone her parents had already chosen for her. That just seems so unfair to me, don't you think? This child hasn't really had a chance to experience life, make mistakes, and grow from them. They are now anticipated to be married and give birth soon. At such a young age, there are so many things these girls want to do, to achieve, and want to be. I couldn't even begin to comprehend how much pressure a 12-year-old would be under at the time. Even worse than the girl's young marriage age was the treatment they suffered from their husbands following civil law. In moderation, a husband could hurt his wife physically. Of course, treating one's wife like a student and instilling politeness in her was a medieval custom. As you can expect, this infuriated several ladies to the point where many of them left their husbands. After that, however, circumstances were really better if they were discovered. They would be burned at the stake. Reminder to self, avoid getting married in the Middle Ages. Number 6. Ladies of the Night to be able to pay our rent, buy a car, and take care of other expenses, we all have our dead-end jobs and side hustles, and sometimes we're not exactly proud of the work we put in to generate money. In the Middle Ages, it was the same. People had to find a way to make money, and many women used the resources their mothers had given them to sustain their children and themselves. Being a woman of the night was a legitimate job in medieval times, which was one of the more advantageous aspects of life for a woman. Although this occupation would eventually become seen as criminal, in medieval times it was just as prevalent as becoming a baker or some other occupation. Because they sold their bodies as if they were any other movable things, these women were regarded as merchants. In medieval times, being a woman of the night was such a widespread career that almost every town had a brothel, even in little towns. So, even though their market may not have been very large, they undoubtedly have a location where they could go see some excellent mummy milkers. Number 7. The Walk of Shame The phrase, walk of shame, is one that we've all heard, but what does it actually mean? And where did it come from in the first place? In the beginning, it was known as skimmington, or harsh music. This has always been done to domineering or intrusive women. They would be required to traverse the entire town's treacherous, uneven stone paths and bare feet. Only toast, it was awful. They would also be likely in scant clothing because, well, why not? Because they set the rules, guys are why. And as you could have anticipated, there would be throngs of people waiting outside, ready to scream, abuse her, and bash pots and pans, calling her names. These guys apparently never had jobs. They were just, I don't know, always ready to holler at a lady walking through town in bare feet because they thought she was being too bossy. If you're asking who exactly is to blame for these public humiliations, the justice system. The official court would ask if she spoke louder than her husband. Simple answer, yes or no. Did you speak louder? Yes? Okay, case is over. Take off your shoes and walk around while we shame you for being too bossy. Number 8. Crimes of the Heart In the Middle Ages, people were actually out in the streets trying to accuse women of anything for an unidentified cause. Witchcraft was a frequent accusation, but women were also frequently charged with adultery. But the fact is, even if a woman never had physical contact with another person, she may still be accused of adultery. You might be wondering how the heck it works. In the medieval era, it all depended on where these individuals resided. If they spent the night away from their husbands or parents, it was regarded as adultery in the Byzantine Empire. Oh, those Slavic regions of Europe, a woman may be charged with infidelity for something as simple as attending a public function. With this reasoning, I'm fairly certain you could be charged with adultery even if you simply breathe the same air as a man. What the heck is this really? The only positive aspect, I suppose, is that adultery was punishable by law. When compared to women, men typically received the harshest punishments. They would, however, be accused of this offense much less frequently than women. So yes, I guess we still get the short end of the stick. Number 9. Nosy Neighbor In the Middle Ages, men who engaged in extramarital affairs were subject to fines, and that's it. You would return to your daily life. However, if you're a woman, it was far worse, just like everything else in this absurd list. Many affairs take place. Okay, it's usual. It's awful, but it's also not that unexpected. We are not shocked by this, but women suffered the worst treatment for these affairs during the Middle Ages. They would pull off their noses, chopped off. 
This is what? You shouldn't be allowed to breathe because you betrayed your partner, should you? Because they were having an affair, they would literally rip a woman's nose and or ears off her face. Frederick II authorized rhinotomy, or the removal of one's nose, as a form of punishment for adultery, as making the victim ugly was the entire goal of this. The worst thing that you've ever heard, don't you think? The problem is that no one might publicly admit to cheating. They understood what was going to happen if someone had explicitly spilled the beans with someone else. Even if they were discovered, they would still turn on one another, just stating snitches received stitches. Number 10. A lady who is accused of prostitution can be imprisoned in a drunkard's cloak. This device, sometimes called the barrel pillory, was used to punish male offenders for offenses like stealing, intoxication, and unrest. The drunkard's cloak was nonetheless also applied to ladies. In England throughout the 16th and 17th century, public intoxication was frequently punished with the drunkard's cloak, while promiscuous women were also subjected to this penalty. The name of the equipment, which is a wooden barrel, an empty beer cask, worn as a shirt with one hole for the neck and two holes for the arms, paints a rather vivid picture of the drunkard's cloak. The wearers of this painfully heavy barrel experienced both pain and humiliation as they were made to parade through the town's streets while being called names for their actions. In Delft, Holland, a man claimed to have seen a barrel that was a weighty vessel of wood, not unlike a butter churn, which the adventurous woman that hath two husbands at one time is to wear upon her shoulders, with her head peeping out of the top, and led about the town as a penance for her incontinence. Number 11. Grand Theft Witchcraft in the Middle Ages, being a woman led to accusations of witchcraft because some townspeople with three teeth claimed it. They frequently believed that women could connect with the devil. Witchcraft practitioners were burned at the stake instead of receiving a large fine as cheating men did. The two main ones were drowning and this, both of which were popular in Scotland. Recall how I stated previously that women would occasionally be plunged into a river or a pond? They would, however, occasionally just be left there. Witch tipping is one cruel thing I have never heard of, depending on whether the subject floated or sank. This was the best punishment if you were accused of treason or witchcraft. It sure beats being burned alive in front of the whole village. With the Salem witch trials at the turn of the 17th century, everything spiraled out of hand. That was the way people were. The American series Salem showed a little bit of what these women went through. Number 12. Finally Reunited this kind of shackle was a wooden restraint that was used to chastise and control fighting women. A woman can be imprisoned alongside the lady she quarreled with or ordered to wear one while walking up and down the stairs for two hours as punishment. So it is safe to say that fighting wasn't allowed. If women were arguing or talking too loud, they would be kept in this device. The majority of Germans and Austrians used these during the Middle Ages. The device had three holes, one for each rest and the third for your neck. Now, oftentimes they would attach the bell to the shrew's fiddle to notify the community that the victim was passing by so that they could speak filth and perhaps throw a few vegetables. But the twin fiddle was the worst. Until the dispute had ended, you are let go. Some families may indeed lock the two younger siblings inside during a fight and refuse to remove their clothing until all things are resolved. This is sort of like an awful medieval version of it. This is more uncomfortable, not humorous, or made of cotton. Just awful. Nothing but awful. Number 13. Banished and Branded the town would banish prostitutes and brothel owners after braiding one of them with a hot iron. The 16th century saw a lot of use of this penalty. Lady Lowe, who maintained a brothel in Aberdeen, was expelled from the city after being brandished with a hot iron by a hangman and ordered to wear a paper crown. If she ever came back, she would be put to death by drowning in a bag. Number 14. The Ducking Stool the next one demands as much work as a team. I can't believe this actually happened. The ducking stool was designed as a kind of punishment for sexually active women. Although men were also punished, women were more sitting ducks, no pun intended. If you are familiar with history, you would realize that most of those who had to endure this were women. The traditional ducking stool was up and running when women were either dragged down the street or forced to sit outside their home in this chair. This is fastened to them, embarrassment at its finest. Can you believe it? The second ducking stool was essentially the same as the first, except to relieve her considerable heat, it was repeatedly dunked into a river. At least, according to French author Francois Maximilien Michon, they ought to have calmed down. If anything, plunge all those irate villagers into the river. They are the ones furious because someone who lives there once engaged in sexual activity. It might sound very strange, but it happened. Number 15. Scratching and Pricking 
Pricking was the more subtle but painful method of punishment for women convicted of witchcraft, as a test from the infamous English and Scottish witch hunts. A specially constructed pricking needle found its way into the hands of witch hunters to classify witches who didn't have any witch marks, often unpleasant moles or imperfections. These needles continuously pierced the accuser's flesh until they produced a mark that met the requirements for a witch's mark, one that would bleed and wasn't painful. Additionally, the sufferer who appeared to be possessed may scratch the pierced accused until blood was drawn. Well, I appreciate you watching this video. Please treat women nicely, because my god, back then things were quite bad. It's quite horrible right now, so just be nice people in general if you're thinking about any of them. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel for more amazing discoveries. Thank you.